Hey folks, welcome to another episode of The Security Table. My name is Chris Romeo. I'm joined by Matt Coles and Izar Terendosh. And I don't know, recently it feels like we've been talking about lots of reasonable application security things. I don't know. This seems like it could be in the realm of reasonable. I'm going to dive right in and just read the question because this has already been referred to by my colleagues as a hand grenade in the room that, that uh, may be dropped into our conversation. And so that question is, should AppSec be a separate team or should the responsibilities of AppSec be completely owned by development? <laughs> oh, he's not going to use it as an air sickness badge. <laughs> Goal. It wasn't that bad Goal. of a question. Come on. <laughs> It'd be, if it was popcorn, it'd be better. So, but it, but it still works. So, Go, Matt. All right. So the the quick the quick way I want to enter, want to start this conversation, if that's okay, is asking it asking this asking this back to you. Do you consider quality engineering Hopefully. should be a part of development? Because it comes down to that. That this is ultimately, I think, the root question here should development own all of the functions that presumably provided checks and balances on their on their activity does quality engineering even exist anymore in 90 percent of the companies out there whether or not it does the question should be should it and should it and and, and or is it being done by but development look, today in, and everybody keeps trying to sell me this thing uh, uh, test-driven development and all that, that good stuff. So the, the quality is, the quality has gone much closer to the, to the developer, right? At least the quality of this thing that you just wrote does the thing that spec needs, it says that it should be doing. My point is that, my point you is that while I completely that. agree that security is a feature of quality, We will always be coming back to the point of who watches the watchers. And if the developer is doing the security testing now, not only is the testing being done right, do, the, do they know what they need to test for? Is the test valid? Uh, are all the proper edge cases uh, addressed? So I hear a lot of people complain to me that as a developer, they find themselves writing much more tests than code. And now we want to overload that with uh, uh, security tests, which is an area where developers, at least my experience, is that developers feel much less equipped to actually do that testing. And the question, am I doing the right thing, is much stronger than am I doing the reasonable thing. And we already know that the testing that is required for security tends to be very cumbersome. And mm -hmm. and in addition to challenging... I I'm a bit concerned because I think Izar just made an argument for compliance. No, 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 no. For far from ago. that. No, let me, let me, let me read back what I heard. Where's, 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 where's that jar? Where's the? Well, let where's me read the, back what I heard. You said, I don't quote because I can't remember exactly, but you said something to the effect of, "Who's watching the watchers? Should security be able to do their their testing? No, should developers? So, to me, I was, I was like. Should developers be, you know, who's who's watching over the developer? No, 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 no. And when I said who's watching the watchers is the developer watching themselves. So I, I haven't touched in the, okay. about security at all. Like I'm looking, if we bring okay. the whole Got thing it. to the developers, will that ever be enough? So yeah, I, I totally see where, where you went of compliance. I, I I see where you got it. If if I went if I had gone, I was afraid. I was no no. I was if afraid. I had gone to the side, but 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 look, that that's the big problem that we're trying to solve, right? Why are we bring the jar out again? Why are we trying to shift everything left? Because we want security to be less burdened by the day to day stuff that we say we can scale because we never have enough. Uh, uh, security people and is the security gap a myth or not and blah 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 and we go back to the roots of, of this post podcast right but what I'm trying to say is at, at some point we, we we push stuff on top of developers and push and push and push and push and it's not only a workload but we are also pushing a, a, a responsibility because we keep saying that developers nowadays are the gatekeepers of security if they want or if they don't they effectually are my point is that we, and, and we have addressed this a number of times. We, we don't 
train people sufficiently or well enough. We don't cover in training everything that they actually need. And yet we keep asking them more and more and more and more and more. And uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like, <laughs> I, I keep asking you, asking more from you, but I'm, I'm not giving you the tools that you need to go there. And if you have those tools, I'm not giving you the time to use those tools enough and so on and so forth. But uh, I think that what I'm trying to say is in an ideal world where security was completely subsumed as a factor of quality, and we could trust that developers had enough knowledge and enough uh, enough uh, uh, mindedness to do the security right thing, then we would be freeing the security team to do those things that are at a higher conceptual level, like figuring out the next step of what could possibly go wrong, or to free them to create more tools to do more wide testing that would validate all the controls and all the, the design uh, stuff that we put in. I just think that we are not, that we are very far from that ideal world. And at this time to say developers can be responsible for the whole security cycle is premature and more than that, it's it's unfair to all involved. It would create an expectation that we could never fulfill. It, so, just to summarize, I think what you said because we've we've touched upon this in other other episodes, right? We are what we're talking about here is giving developers more responsibility, making them accountable for things without giving them more capability. Right. So they are, we are asking them to do more without giving them the ability to do more. And, and so that brings a challenge. The other piece about, you know, the, I, and again, back to this notion of, and whether security is part of quality, I was, I was used, making them equivalent, not necessarily that they have to be a part of, uh, but, you know, if, if developers are writing code and developers are testing code and developers are testing security of that code and developers are releasing that code. For, so two pieces, first off, they are under pressure from their, you know, their organization, their leadership, whatever to, to release something that functions on a schedule. And so there's a pressure from, from that respect that what, what loses in that conversation, right? What's the first to go if they're responsible for everything and they're under the pressure to release? And, and I'm not saying that, that that solves it by having AppSec outside of their organization, but having an or, having parts of the parts of the broader organization that have the ability to pre press the brakes, right? To to reveal that there are well. All right, no, doesn't no, no, always no, no, work, no. but the goal is the goal is that somebody so there is there's an organization outside, whether it's a quality organization or a security org or a privacy org or legal or whoever it is, to say uh, I have some concerns. And oh, by the way, here's here's the things that you need to consider. Is security in that, in the only aspect. place where we have this? So, so here's the thing. No, like for I like governance, because so. you're describing governance. You're, you're describing a need for the governance function. So even if we pushed everything into development, we still have some check and balance of governance. But so so I can't like what other parts of the business other than security have to have a governance angle. So that requires we'll somebody you. else to audit and, that, and look at what's happening. Well, in, in, in product development, that's called. Cool. Quality engineering does exist if you're talking about product product development, physical systems especially, more so than obviously. But, but that's the thing. We, we, we are talking, sorry, all sorry, of a sudden, we are talking compliance again or governance. And it's not. It, it's it's one step before that. What we're talking here is is verification. Because now we were putting into the, the developer a responsibility that needs to be verified before it gets accepted. Right. So it, it's. Well, actually, wouldn't you even go further back than that? Sorry. Is our. Um, 
an AppSec program doesn't start with No, 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 no. It, it doesn't start with. But AppSec if we bring that whole thing, that whole load to the developer right now, okay, what we are left with at the AppSec team side is to have that verification so that you ha can have assurance, so that you can have governance, so that you can have all that good mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, so verification is governance, though. Like, we can call it verification, but it's it's governance at the end of the day. It's did you do the things you were supposed mm -hmm. to do, and are there any glaring issues that came out of it that you refused Yeah, but to when we say governance, it has a, a, a right. different weight of being a security thing by itself. I think that what I'm trying to say is if we are bringing security to the developer as, again, the analogy that I always make, the same as performance, right? You don't really have like a formal performance verification, compliance, assurance thing. Performance is just expected to happen. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, we will notice because something is going to take longer than it should. You well, no, 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 you have metrics. metrics. Definitely you're, you have metrics because towards. you have to stand by that threshold that was specified, right? So it's interesting that now you can think of security in terms of, okay, do we have a threshold for security that we have to stand by? And then we go back to reasonable security. All, all, all things lead to reasonable security nowadays. But the, the, the interesting thing is that, the interesting to me thing here is that it's one of those, those cases of, actually, let me put this the other way. When, when Matt was talking and he mentioned the, the, the pump the brakes, Immediately, what, what came to my, my, my mind was not exactly a car pumping the brakes, but all of a sudden, we, we are putting developers in the position of solving the trolley problem, right? They, they're coming down the street in this trolley, and there's a fork in the road, and they can decide which side they take. And one side is performance, one side is security. <laughs> Where are you going to put your time, right? You're going to... You're going to kill right. this one, it's or you're exactly going to kill the other I was one, right? Was yeah. <laughs> so... Hmm. I think the developers today are better equipped to choose the performance usability feature branch than the security branch. And they will, by default, choose that one because there is this function of some form of AppSec team that's going to take the, the, the load of going to the other branch and doing those specific things. Do you think that champions embedded within development teams help help address this in some way? And actually, should we consider champions as being an extension of AppSec in the development organization, given that champions generally may or may not be writing code, may, and it may not be building features or working on performance? A couple also, of months to... ago, I would tell you with a full mouth BS, but I have seen the light and I have been led to, to think in other ways that a proper <laughs> champion program talk to. <laughs> will make all the difference. Just having a security champion, probably not. Having a proper security champion program behind that security champion, probably yes. Is it going to solve all the problems? Absolutely not. Is it going to, life, uh, to, to make life easier for everybody? Yes. And it, it so provides visibility, get... too, right? okay, into you don't know what you don't know. Like champions provide visibility into more of the problems and issues and things that are taking place. And it, it, it is a connective tissue kind of thing between security and the development teams. Yes and no. Because to... I think that rather than visibility, they, they provide a filter. I think that, again, in a good security champion program, you're going to get a level between the development teams and the, the AppSec team where the things that are going to reach the AppSec team are those things that the champion was not able to deal with by themselves to an acceptable level. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get the more hairy things. Yeah. So filtering from a good perspective in that yes. the champion will be able to deal with some things that never bubble up to the AppSec team. And I would go one step further and, and say that that filtering is mostly going to be what people in AppSec teams would consider noise filtering. Don't come to me with your latest SQL mm -hmm. injection. Come to me with your big, 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 hairy problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so this is an interesting, let's bring it back to the topic at hand. Now, imagine if that champion was working for himself 
because AppSec is now part of the insuring team. So we're not talking about taking and extending AppSec into development. The question is, should AppSec be part of development? So what do you lose in that situation? Let's say for a moment that you have an insuring organization that's split across multiple multiple units. Who gets who gets what airtime, right? You have you have a I imagine you'll have challenges of of domain control across your leadership, right? People with different reporting structures. Unless you have a unified insuring team, you're going to have a a, a, a play back. Well, and I forth, think people right? have to see the like people engineering leadership has to see the light of the importance of security, the prioritization of security to your, to the earlier points about at the same level as quality and performance. I, I think you can, I think this is the goal. I think this is, this should be where we're aiming. I don't think we're there today. I don't, most, most organizations are not mature enough for engineering leadership to be responsible for the application security pieces of the things that they build. Now, I think it's a good thing to get there. Like I, my, when I think about this question, it's like in 10 years from now, that's not the question, but I'm going to change the question. In 10 years from now, is it po- would it be possible for AppSec to be owned by the development team? Yes, because we're seeing tooling, yep. security tooling should become development tooling. And any, anybody that's building a tool out there, if you're not building developer tooling as an AppSec team or as an AppSec, if your products aren't migrating towards the developer and they're stuck on the security team, you're going to be going out of business Not only, in the next 10 years. Can I can I just jump in, though? Uh, there's more to AppSec. There's more to AppSec than verification. There's more to AppSec than even Yes, develop. but those are the hairy problems. Right? AppSec includes... But uh, hold on, hold on. So if, and I think I think I'm, I'm correct here, that AppSec would include requirements... And and good thing we're not talking about privacy because there would be a, a plethora of those things to worry about. But let's say you know security for a moment has to deal with only a handful of of require of of standards and basis of of requirements. They have to do translation from industry requirements into product requirements. That's so requirement generation in the first place is not. A development task. That's a product today. management task, right. though. Mm. Like in this new world, product right. management should be the ones that own. So if we're going to have AppSec be engulfed by the engineering department, requirements management has to be engulfed by the product mm. management function. But by putting it that way, you get to a position where <laughs> in, a, in, a, in an extreme situation, you could have a product manager saying, you know what, guys, forget security. We, we have all their stuff to deal with, right? I think that in the case where security becomes a development function, then call it requirement, call it uh, 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 stuff written in stone. Security has to become a value, something that the developer wakes up and aims yeah. for. And today it is not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, in product management, your example about product management. Is that, I mean, I, that, that would be my old school answer from the days of days gone by. Oh, well, product managers aren't going to promote security. They're not going to, they're going to say, we're not doing security. We have a customer feature to do. I don't know that that's still the case. But, but that's the thing. It's not the case. It's not the case. But given the choice, as Matt said, given the choice, something is going to give. It's human nature. And if, if time pressure, you know, yeah, the iron and, triangle. And if adding a new feature, yeah, but are you going to give up? Adding a new feature is in this day and age, if and adding security is delaying product going out of the door, the choice is going to be clear. And a, and a, and a CVSS ten vulnerability is me losing my job as a product manager in this new world. Yeah, but then they go and find somewhere else because security is not a value. Yeah, I mean, if security is if if, if you're if you're if the lack of a decision results in people getting fired, which I've never seen that happen yet. I haven't seen that in my career yet where, where a product manager is held accountable for a decision. I'm just saying, I don't think people are as naive about security as they were when I was in a big product. They, they are not. And we should keep in mind that the, the executive order. Do, so the things that are coming out now, from CISA, from NIST, the executive order, et cetera, are starting to bring this to the forefront, right? Now the people responsible, and we, 
ignore for a moment of who actually is responsible, but people who are now who are responsible today now have to take it serious or have always had to take it seriously, but now actually have a have a but yeah, yeah. financial penalty and, and, and for not That's exactly the so. point. Why are we as security professionals so happy that all this stuff is coming out? Because we are seeing the shadow of the big stick in the sky coming over everybody. <laughs> Right. So now, no, <laughs> yeah, but now remember, we can stand aside and say, is, see, we told you you'd better do this stuff. But remember, all of these documents are only governing sales to the government, the U.S. government. It's still a, a big buying. It, 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 it's it's a big buying power. Right. And at some. But I don't. Yeah. But I mean, it, how, how big of a buying power is it at the end of the day? But at some point, like it's it's I don't, we discussed this at some point, politicians will say, wait. Why only the government is being asked to do this? Why isn't? Yeah, but they've the never done it. They've never done it in in. I've been in this industry for twenty six years, and I've always thought that. And they've never done it for whatever reason. They have not been able to capture the private side because that's a whole new era when we're getting into the geopolitical <laughs> podcast now. But like that's a whole new level of government oversight and control that. One, stifle, I think we talked about this before too, stifles innovation in my mind. Anytime the government comes in and says, here's what you have to do, means innovative, people just stop doing innovative things. And they they fall into a world where least common denominator. So I don't, I you know, it's interesting that it's never happened in, in the 26 years I've been in security. I always thought it was, I always wondered why the government didn't mandate requirements for security for every every product that's created in America. For some reason they haven't. I don't so, think they're going wait, to. Wait, let, let's do the math thing and bring this back to the initial question. So you say if government starts putting, ro- putting rules into place and expecting people to abide to them, then that's going to kill innovation. What happens when we bring that, that down to the scale of a development team with the government, in double quotes, being the AppSec team? putting down rules that now they have to abide to, will that kill innovation as well? That'll kill everything. So it'll be the end of the technology sector, <laughs> what you just described. So the answer <laughs> so the answer to our No, no, no. I think he's making it equivalently, not uh, not the government being part of access. No, so so the answer to our question is no, right. the AppSec team still needs to exist and have a function that's not going to be fulfilled by developers. Because otherwise, that's going to kill mm. innovation and, and kill all the good stuff that they do. And I don't think that that's the answer that we all agree is the right one. I mean, I don't see how lack of an AppSec team kills innovation. My point no, is it's kill security. anytime you governments, <laughs> yeah, kill security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, but does it though? That's that, but that's what we have to try to understand. Does it really? I would have said 15 years ago, yes, if you remove the security team, everyone in development would be like, ah, we're free. Everyone, we're doing, all we're doing <laughs> is feature development for the next six years. But I don't know that that's still the reality of the way product managers and engineering teams view the world. Uh, and, and I would say it depends. Right? Because again, remember when a couple of episodes ago we said, hey, security is not a constant, it's a function, right? So there will be some environments where the lack of an AppSec team coordinating things. And at the most basic, like different development teams, and you you are drawing a a bar of security that everybody, a minimal bar that everybody has has to stand to, okay? That that that's a central function. There's no way to have teams collaborate and, and figure that bar by themselves. Th- there must be a way, but it's not easy, right? On not the other easily. hand, yeah, you have easy. the three guys in a garage with their startup, understanding that all the, the stuff that they are using is off the shelf, is cloud provider given, and the threat model is very well understood. And they know that in these guidelines here, if they follow these guidelines here, they'll be fine until it's time to get more complex. So that that security function, one of the things that it's pointing to at the graph is at which step do you forcibly need an AppSec team in place? But in a perfect world, going back to the kind of the beginning of your example here, wouldn't you want what is now the planning piece of the AppSec team? In a perfect world, doesn't that exist in whatever planning 
happens in engineering versus having in a separate a separate planning and management kind of function of of what we're going to do. Like when I come back to it, I'm like, if I was going to design an organization from scratch and there was no other constraints on the way people perceive security, I would put the pieces together like program management would it, I'd have program management for engineering. I wouldn't have program management for AppSec and program management for engineering as separate. So what, you, what you're saying now is jobs. in a perfect world, security has such a place in the table where it's not a separate function anymore. So the people who already have a place in the table that generally we have agreed these are the people with a high seat in the table, all of a sudden they do security as well. And you don't have the guy from security sitting on the side and going, oh, but security, oh, but security. So in a perfect world, yeah. But my God, we are so far from a perfect world. Yeah. And that comes back down to there's a quality team, right? I'm going to go back to quality. Quality is a fun, quality is a part of that has a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. They always do. Whether they're staffed separately or they're part of the development team, there's always a line item in program program planning where and if not if think, it's not you know, keep... it's it's subintended because again quality is a value security isn't but we keep coming back to quality as an example here and i think quality exists as a function in a very small percentage of the technological world as far as companies in pro to matt to your earlier point product companies pr large product companies is where you see quality specifically Called so, upon to find large, define quality, to find large, um, greater than uh, because greater than <laughs> define quality, greater than a hundred developers uh, is where or okay, or, I mean even probably okay, bigger, than that, uh, bigger than that, bigger than that. I've like when I look at, I would say with, but I, when I look at companies that I just don't see quality mentioned. Okay, so, a lot so of places that I let, let me go anymore. back from from quality back to performance. Okay, to me, okay. code that goes into production and, and I've seen this a number of times is performing code. It can be crappy code. It can be really, really crappy code. But is it doing what it's supposed to do in the time that it's allotted to it? Yes. Ship it, right? So performant code is code that gets shipped. Secure code is code that takes more time to get shipped. Today, because of the Today, way things because are. of the yeah. way the product development or uh, so I, I, code I think development that is done. <laughs> in my head, I, I keep going back to. I think that what we're asking from developers now is the, the inverse Spider-Man thing. Like with with great power comes great responsibility. We are asking them for a lot of responsibility without giving them a lot of power. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's a whole talk. There's a conference yep. talk right there. Wait, let, let me put it in on that the list. Title. <laughs> Yeah, add it to your list because that's that's good. That is that's that's everything that's wrong with AppSec. Basically, right now. you know, and, and we give them the the, the power in very um, small amounts, very focused amounts. We're giving them, uh, I don't know, code helpers in IDEs. We're giving them linters. We're giving them SCA. We're giving them SAST. I will not say DAST. We are giving them YAST. We have RASP. Okay, and. We are put, putting this load on top of the developer all the time, but we have to, at the same time, realize that each one of these things that we are giving them has a whole backend that has to be kept fed by people who understand security and not development. And that, I think, is the final function of the AppSec team, which is to feed all these mechanisms of power that we are giving to the developer. Yeah, so one one thing maybe, and this this is probably a good place to stop, and I'm going to tee it up maybe for a future conversation. Are we giving them that of that capability or that responsibility, or are they asking slash taking? Yeah, I would say that we are forcing on them because it's the way that we are finding to scale up the AppSec team. That as we have agreed, we we never can man enough, that we never can person enough. Hmm. I'm glad we got this all figured out. So the next ten years of AppSec, I still have popcorn to go. Easy for everyone. <laughs> That's right. Yes, more, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There's more popcorn to be eaten while someone else tries to make a statement. Like that's a that's a thing. So yeah, I mean, I think when I when I summarize this, I think about AppSec 
being owned by development or being in integrated, I'm going to say integrated is a better word than owned. So, so AppSec integrated in development should be a lofty goal yes. that we aim towards, because I think that is the perfect state for the way these, for really optimizing and making things go really fast, having people, having these two functions integrated, but he's are to your point until we get to the point that the, the era where, Security is valued. It's it's understood. It's non negotiable everywhere. It's going to be tough to to not have a separate team that can do it. But we can aim and, in that direction. But but notice that we haven't touched a whole different conversation that's connected to this. What happens when security becomes a function of development, but you have a high rotation in your development roster? So that's one more part of tribal knowledge and, and culture that gets changing all the time. And how do you deal with that? I think it's, I think it's, it, it ultimately comes down to your developer, developer experience, mm -hmm. right? That's a big yeah. thing now of, of having the right tools that simplify ramp up for new developers that provide the information that developers need to be the high, you know, the, as productive as they possibly can maximize productivity. And when we start thinking about AI coming into that, that's, that's going to be yeah. a part of developer experience as well. But, <laughs> you know, if, if, if security is part of developer experience, then I think it, it helps to solve that problem that you're describing about turnover and ramping up new people. Like that's what I see in 10 years from now, I would be shocked if developer experience wasn't fully in including security. And AppSec pieces all being fully and, and at the same time, don't forget that uh, on the side of the tools, on the side of the experience, on the side of the culture and all that good stuff, we also have a lot of uh, uh, good advances in the, the basics of the thing. Like, for example, the adoption of Rust now in the Linux kernel. It's memory safe, mm. but it is performant. It is on par with C and, and other performant languages. So that, 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 that's a good one, right? <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, dot, I mean, dot, in 10 dot. years, no, you're going to get a lot of improvements, <laughs> right? Like, the <laughs> eco to your point, the ecosystem is going to improve in 10 years as well that will make this even easier to include in the developer experience. Like, imagine a world where C, I mean, I don't know when we're going to eradicate C. Eradicate means 0%, but there will be if a don't, day. Don't. There will be a day where... <laughs> Yeah. We have assembly still in, in use. We, we, forget, forget C for a moment. Well, maybe the, now, but actually, and actually, that that's even. I mean, we can get into a whole whole can of can. like Kubernetes has. Kubernetes probably has to go, go where uh, if we're going to talk about security, <laughs> uh, right? Because I mean, misconfigured mis, mis, misconfigured servers is a is still. Oh, but a is that problem. an AppSec well, problem? When you think about, it's more of an infrastructure problem. If we're doing away with the AppSec oh, team, it, we don't it, have it too. There's is no that an infrastructure team, problem or is that a DevOps problem? Uh, and wait, uh, all an of a sudden, we're I mean, talking security of DevOps. Is that a DevSec DevOps problem? Like, whose problem is it? It's almost like this. It's almost like development and, and security. Oh, my God, I have a problem. <laughs> I mean, when I think Kubernetes, I think about there is running Kubernetes yourself and there's Kubernetes that the cloud provider provides for you as a managed service that does insulate you from a lot of the, the shooting yourself in the foot I, type of things. I, you know, I find, I find it astonishing that, that you are so divorced from product development, physical things that ship. I, I find customers. it adorable. <laughs> that contain a plethora of technologies. <laughs> It's like you're. It's like you're ignoring an entire, like the half the population. I mean, seriously, the world is not all cloud yet. Oh, it should be. Why is it not all cloud? Hey, he's saving it for a cloud today. For yeah. So where are we on time today? <laughs> give you, give you, give you one power failure, and you'll know why. But, the but whole power, thing can't power doesn't cloud. fail. Power doesn't the, the, fail. the infrastructure is perfectly re uh, redundant. <laughs> now we're going to start talking about reliability. So. <laughs> All right, I think this is uh, I think we 
I don't know. I feel like we made a little bit of progress yeah. on this. I, I think it's it's there, there's nothing to be done. The audience about. agrees. All in favor? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, our, just just to let everyone, if anyone else ever listens to this, that is our one yes. audience member and the important and, one. Uh, the dog can only hear Matt's portion, so it's a very the dog is very against. <laughs> no, 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 they, they hear much better we than we do. Can't hear. He's getting the whole thing. Oh, good point. Good point. Well. <laughs> <laughs> folks thanks for listening to another episode of the security table um we'll bring another challenging question after Izar is done Wait. raising yeah. his hand before we finish that we have to put, put a, a call out here so folks who are listening to us as you all know the three of us are big fans of threat modeling and we are coming up we we are part of the uh, beautiful brain that's thinking up the threat model con at the end of this year and we are looking for submissions Conference. Conference. Yeah, conference, not a con. Not a, not a con. Not a, we we not already did con. that one. <laughs> now it's a conference. <laughs> and we, we are looking for uh, uh, submissions, papers, and stuff for you to present. So please look into our uh, each. Each one of us has their own uh, social media presence. Take a look in there. We have made many posts, uh, posts with the, uh, the pointer to the, uh, the CFP. And we, we really look, look forward to, to meeting new people with new ideas there. So even if you think that it's something crazy, and you know what, I'm gonna volunteer. If you want to submit things, but you don't think that uh, they're they're ready enough, or you think they're not good enough, or anything like that, by all means, reach out to me, and I'll be happy to work with you and polish that that submission to the point that you feel good about it. And uh, uh, we we're expecting to hear from you guys. All right, I'm gonna send my submission. No way. <laughs> oh, don't you have a keynote or something? <laughs> I might. I might be. I might have an opportunity to address our audience. So, hey, uh, folks, thanks for being a part of the security table again. We look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs>